Hi everyone, this is episode two in our big electrical build-out project. If you haven't seen the first episode, go back and watch that now. It's a full overview of the entire project. In this episode, we're gonna go over a little bit of the table design and build-out and then remove the old AGM batteries and replace them with the new Epic Lithium batteries. A little update on our battery project here. This is the table that sits on top of the battery. So you can see we have all five of the batteries sitting out here. The first four of these are our 24 volt bank and the one on the end is our 12 volt bank. So there were a couple of design issues I wanted to solve and the table to me seemed to be the best way to go about it. Very important is that the connection to the battery shouldn't travel more than seven inches before before you get to a fuse. And these are class T fuses. So they're the ones that the ABYC recommends. Otherwise, you have to go through a bit to insulate those wires and make sure that there's no way that they can actually contact something and short out. I just like this idea of having a fuse very close to the terminal. So I also used bus bars instead of wiring for as many connections as I possibly could. This is actually a Z-Bend. This is the positive terminal on one of these batteries and it's actually screwed in underneath here. It comes up like that, it goes in one side of the fuse, comes out of the fuse and goes directly into my main switches. This section is the 24 volt, this section is the 12 volt. In the areas where I couldn't use bus bars, I built four aught cables. This is the negative in on the shunt. It travels underneath the table actually through these holes. There's another hole over here. So we can put them underneath there. They, they connect to the negative terminal, which is right about there and they connect up here. So that worked pretty well. Well, I also have to connect the batteries together because these are two banks of 24 volts, but they're built from 12 volt batteries. So I've got two of them in series and then the two of two ones in series then get paralleled together here and into our shunt. So I built more bus bars that connect the batteries together where they need to be connected because they're in series. So that's what those are for. This cable here is just a bonding cable. On the distributors, there's an additional bolt right here on the grounding on both sides. And it's kind of weird. You've got a 24 volt system here and you got a 12 volt system here and they're pretty independent of each other. The 24 really doesn't interact with the 12 except to charge it. And therein lies the rub. There will be a ground connection. So we need to add a bonding wire for those two systems. So that's what this guy is. And it will also travel down down through the table, snake its way around, and come up and connect to the other distributor. It's been quite a lot of work actually to get to this point. The bending of all of these bus bars has really been something. What I'm using is basically this sort of thing. This is 800 amp bus bar. It's big, it's thick, it's beefy, and takes a grinder to cut it and some pretty crazy tools to bend it as well. It's been pretty difficult to work with. Luckily for this stuff, I didn't have to bend it much at all because it's just the connections between the switches and into the shunt. So we have 400 amps here, 400 amps here. They come in together, 800 amps out into our distributor. At this point, I don't have a lot of work to do on the table or the connections. One thing I do need to do for the table though is I bought some mahogany. This is three quarter inch mahogany. The spacing of the table up off the batteries is exact three quarters of an inch. So I bought some extra wood here. I now have like little spacers that are under here. So I just have a little block is all I'm using right now. This is too small really for what I need it to be. It just was working well for building it. So these guys, I need to cut them and mount them to the bottom of this so they can sit on top of the batteries properly. That's one thing I have to do. As far as the table table goes, once those are on, it can be sanded and then it's gonna be painted with white bilge paint. So we'll paint the whole thing so that it's completely sealed from the elements because it does live in the engine bay and there should never be any water in there, but who knows? You don't want this thing getting wet. You don't want water coming in the edges and expanding and messing things up. When we're in the engine bay, we're gonna be accessing it from this side. The 12 volt will be on our far right, 24 volt will be on our far left and all 
all the wires for the inverters are going to be going to the 24 volt here. I want to show you what I've learned about crimping these connectors. Now, these big 4 aught lugs, these things have to be crimped on very, very tightly. We can't have any resistance and we certainly can't have them pulling off the end of the wire. It's kind of critical that these be perfect. So I had a nice pair of crimpers here, these things here, which are hydraulic, and they come with different die sizes here. So you can put in whatever size you want. So if you've got bigger wire, bigger crimps, you've got bigger dies. So you just swap out the, the die size for what you need. Like for these guys here would be a set of these maybe. These guys here are the four aught, and this is four aught. So that's the hydraulic one. You kind of close off the hydraulic bit and you can pump this thing and it will push as you can see through this hydraulic ram on the bottom. And when it's completely collapsed like that, it's crimped down on the lug. And in theory, it should have just completely crushed down on the wire and it's a really solid fit. I found that these things just don't seem to work that well. I've had a lot of problems with this one actually. So instead I bought another one. This one was more expensive and not hydraulic, but the way it works, you can see that pin. So it drives the pin into the top of the lug. It's very, very serious. In fact, in order to do the four aughts, which is these cables here, I had to put my entire weight into this thing in order to get it to crimp. It's pretty serious, but I think it does a much better job. The other thing I really like about this guy is that it's adjustable. You can change the size just by rolling this knob back and forth. Um, you can set it all the way, it goes all the way to four aught and all the way down to eight gauge. And if you've ever felt that your crimp wasn't it was, yeah, it could have been a little bit tighter. You can always just roll it down a little bit and recrimp it. I really like that feature about it a lot. That makes it so much easier because with this other one, like I was showing before, you have to pull this bolt out of the top and swap out your dies with a completely different set of dies if you want to use a different wire size or a different lug size. So I don't know. I thought this was going to be super sweet. I thought it was going to be awesome, but uh, especially because it's hydraulic and everything. They're not particularly expensive. It just seems so serious. But let me show you an example of what we've got here. So here are two connections done. This one was done with our green crimper here. You can see the way it sort of creates this hexagon when it crimps down on it. And the other one was done with this guy because you can see the pin that was driven into the top of the lug. Now these are eight gauge lugs. So they're the absolute smallest you could do with this one. This green one will do smaller sizes than eight gauge, but Here's the problem. You can already tell that this one is super serial and there's no way that wire's ever coming out of there. There's just no way. Look at, I mean, that thing is just so crunched on there. There's no way that wire's ever coming out. This one, I was, I mean, it even squished the metal out on each side. I actually ended up grinding it down. But the problem is you should always test your connectors is you grab hold of the wire, put a screwdriver through your lug and pull and it came right out. So it looks super sweet, right? I mean, it's got a nice good crimp on it and everything it looked great but the wire just came right out and I think maybe part of the problem is that this wire is so fine this is like almost human hair this is marine grade pacer wire and it the little bits are so small on them I think that it just has a tendency to kind of move around on this type of crimp but this one no way that's not going anywhere there's no way we're getting that out of there no not at all there's gonna be 400 amps flowing through possibly flowing through these cables if your connection and your crimp isn't just top notch, it's going to get very warm here. Any place you've got a bad connection is going to create a lot of heat because there's more resistance there and the heat dissipated is I squared R. So if there's more resistance, you multiply that times the current squared and that's going to be the heat dissipated. So it's a big deal when you're running 400 amps of current. Be very careful with your crimps. Be very careful that they, they don't pull out. Put a screwdriver on them and try to pull these things out everything you've got and if it doesn't budge doesn't move at all you're in good shape like i showed, showed you on this other one it pulled off and it didn't take much at all for it to just pull right out i'm learning things as i go for sure this is a a lot of skills required to do this and from woodworking skills to metal skills to grinding to bending the z bends on here that's a thing i got a teeny little blue vise that i clamped on the dock what i used was actually a set of adjustable wrenches 
and you'd put an adjustable wrench across it like this, put the other one on the adjustable wrench and pull. And that was the only thing I could use to bend these bus bars because they are so serious. These, they're really nice. They're uh, tin plated copper, so they're not going to corrode. They're very nice bus bars, but that much copper, they're actually pretty darn thick and uh, pretty difficult to bend. We're getting there with the whole project as well. Uh, as soon as I can get this table finished and ready to be painted, I'm gonna switch over and begin working again on the wall. I have it out on the top of the table here and the bracket for the inverters and our two boxes. You can see over here, these two gray boxes are the AC boxes. All that needs to be laid out, needs to be just set. And then that piece will be ready for painting as well. And once I get both these parts painted, it starts getting exciting. Then I can install the wall back there that'll be great and then I can install the batteries and the table so the big question is when were we going to cut this entire system over and through a bunch of discussion I think we came up with a good idea we do have a separate isolated 12 volt system here we will always have that because the boat runs on 12 volts so if I install all of this in there that single 12 volt battery in lithium has the same capacity as all six of our AGM batteries together. So I can literally tie the boat to that battery. Now, the next question is, well, how am I gonna keep it charged? Well, how's the batteries getting charged now? They're getting charged through the inverter and the, the power's coming in from shore through the inverter and the inverter is charging and our solar is charging them as well. So that'll be easy. I just took all that stuff right back up to it, reprogram the inverter to say, now you're charging a lithium battery and there we go, Bob's your uncle. I think it's gonna be great. We'll be able to get this installed and we will won't affect the 12 volt systems on the boat at all. And that will give us time to install the new inverters and the 24 volt wiring, get that all set and our new AC wiring, quite a bit of that. We have wires we need to run from shore power and the generator all the way over here into this engine bay where all this stuff's gonna live. And then the output of those wires that come out of the auto transformer have to go all the way up into the cupboard in the saloon which is where our AC power distribution panel is and switch panel and circuit breakers and all that. So there's a bit of one running wire needs to be done as well but that can all be done without any interruptions to the 12 volt system. I'm actually pretty excited about this. I'll touch back with you a little bit later when I have some of these parts completely finished and we're getting ready to install the batteries into the engine bay. If you like this content, consider subscribing to our channel. If you want real-time updates and benefits, consider another level and become a patron. It really helps us out. All right, everybody, big day today. We're gonna to be installing the new lithium batteries. I really hope it goes well. At any rate, we've got our good friend Greg here is going <laughs> to help us today. He's gonna to be the heavy lifter to get these things out. We were trying to figure out how much these lead acid batteries weigh, the originals. I'm guessing they're somewhere around, you think in 130, 40 pounds? 40, easy. Yeah, 140 pounds. Yeah. So the new ones that are going in, they're actually physically a little larger. We can only get five in the space of six, for instance. Those batteries are 96 pounds each. So what we're gonna do at really high level is disconnect these batteries, shut down the 12 volts on the boat, and then we're gonna install and pull these out, put the new batteries in, they have to go in specific order. Then the table goes on top, and we've seen the table, and then on top of the table goes the Victron distributors and the fuses and all that. All that needs to be hooked up. And today, all we're hooking up is 12 volts. The 24 volt side will be ready to go, but it won't be hooked up because we're still waiting on one of the inverters anyways, and I just want to get that house back up. I want to get the boat back up and everybody happy. One thing I cannot forget to do is to reprogram the inverter and the MPPTs, the solar chargers and such, and everything in the system because they're all looking at lead acid right now and they need to be looking at lithium. That's going to be a thing. Yeah, it's just not plug and play, right? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's very much not plug and play. So Heidi is going to be behind the camera today. I think that's about it. So we're going to get started, get these things disconnected and start pulling them out. <laughs> Can you grab me the 13 millimeter yep. for this and I'll start loosening all these battery connections. So at this point, all I'm doing is just removing all the interconnects on the batteries. And I uh, found a couple of loose battery terminals. That's fun. You always find all sorts of stuff. So I'm just pulling out these little cables. They just connect the positives and the negatives here. So we can get these batteries free and get them out of the boat. Next part's gonna be super fun, because that's gonna be lifting these bad boys up and out. Now, I guess what all we need to do is kind of make a pathway here, clear things out. These batteries are ready to do a bye-bye. Okay. 
this is the confusing part of all this is that I disconnect the battery cables and the inverter then powers the system. So the 12 volt is still on. I could turn the inverter off, but we'll lose 12 volt and 120 volt on the boat. And if the inverter's happy enough to just sort of keep tootling along, I think it's great. I just need to be very careful and very cautious to know that the connections down here, that 12 volt is still hot and the ground is still active as well. Just have to be a little bit careful, but other than that, I think so far so good. We'll see if it's an issue. I guess I'll be the first to know. Everyone will be a quick second. Yeah. Worst it'll do is pop a breaker. From here, if you have something like cardboard, I can shuffle it and it'll slide on it. Yeah. And it also won't damage your decks. Yeah. This but I could potentially, from here, boom, boom. I'm hoping they're not too bad. This was an excellent opportunity to get in there and do some real cleaning. It's always bothered me how dirty it was around the batteries. Also, with batteries out, I've got great access to some of the wiring behind. So it was a really good opportunity to get to some things that were a little bit difficult to get to before. Next was a bit of strategizing to figure out how we were going to get all five of the new batteries onto the tray. All right, so, so what do you want me to do? Just kind of put it like three quarters away, like leave about a battery width? Left. Yeah, or just, if we can just get or it center. on the tray, I think we can. Well, is five, five the first one going in or one the first one going in? Five. Five is first, okay. It'll be five, four, one, two, three, probably. Yeah, that's the order we'll do it because you, you we, they need to go in the center and then get moved to either end. So if you put one, two, three, four, five, then you, you, you can't get the fifth one in. Gotcha. Yeah. Lighter? A little bit. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot lighter, but... Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Do you have anything in here? No. And they, it slides around like it's on ice. It's oh, easy. that's good and bad. Okay. Yeah. All right, let me get that one placed. Oh, we gotta get the brackets and in. I get the bracket on. Oh, yeah, and we'll go from the there. The rest of them, except for the last one, or the, the one on the other end, same deal. Let me get this done and then we'll do it in. Actually. These are a couple of aluminum brackets I built specifically to attach the batteries to the tabletop. They have to be installed right now because I won't be able to get to them once the battery is shoved all the way to the right. Did it fit? Yay. It did. Oh my god. I feel like a glove. It really? Jeez. Perfectly. Yeah, huh? that's really tight. All right, well, that's it. Yay. That's it. They are officially in. Thanks for your help, Greg. Oh, no problem. Happy to help. <laughs> I, uh, I owed you one for any rebuilt my carburetor twice on my dinghy, my dinghy oh, uh, motor. Cool. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Uh, that's great. <laughs> and, and also fixed a, a repair on my truck uh, when one of the neighbors backed into it. Oh, right. I forgot about <laughs> Feels that. Feels good to, to yeah. repay a yeah, little bit, you know? She ended up giving us a gift card or something like that. Yeah, yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah. Cool. Join us next time when we install the table on top of the batteries 
and then begin installing the rest of the components on top of the table, then do some testing, and then finally turn the 12 volts live and see how we did. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Until next time, safe travels, bye.